Today we will be taking up one of the important orthopedic topics and that is the infection of the bone, osteomyelitis. And the form of osteomyelitis we would be discussing would be acute osteomyelitis. We have to remember some of the important examination points being repeatedly asked from this topic. So we will go about these points more specifically. As far as this acute osteomyelitis is concerned, you have to remember that the most common site in the bone where from acute osteomyelitis originates is the metaphysis. We would not go into the anatomy of ep metaphysis, epiphysis, diaphysis. So you have to remember that metaphysis is the part of the bone which is most commonly involved in acute osteomyelitis because of certain features like peculiar hairpin arrangement of the vessels in this part of the bone. So, metaphysis, number one. Number second point would be what is the most common organism which causes acute osteomyelitis invariably and undoubtedly uh, in any part of the world, staph, staph aureus would be the most common organism associated with acute osteomyelitis. Then what is the mode by which this infection is carried? The hematogenous route is the most common route for acute osteomyelitis. Now, once the process starts, there are certain pathological changes which occur in the bone and what are the various terminologies associated with osteomyelitis. The first thing would be the presence of necrosis. Once this acute osteomyelitis goes unchecked, it causes necrosis of the bone and we give the name to the necrotic bone tissue as sequestrum. Now, in the body, to any insult, we have got a response and the bone would develop a response in the form of new bone at a later stage and that new bone would be called as involucrum. So, you have to remember sequestrum and involucrum. Now, in long-standing cases, we have a bigger necrotic area developing within the bone and which would be forming a sort of an abscess which we call as Brody's abscess. So you have to remember what we mean by sequestrum involucrum and Brody's abscess. Now, what happens especially in children or in adults as well, the symptomatology would be a patient would be febrile and what else would he presenting with? He would not just move his limbs, a condition which we call as pseudoparalysis. Paralysis not because of muscles, because of the patient in severe pain and inability to move his limbs and we call this term as pseudoparalysis. Now, how do we diagnose this acute osteomyelitis? I would not go to a radiologist and have a radiograph done. No, because acute osteomyelitis would not be detected by radiography or x-rays in the first two, three weeks. So the first investigation, which invariably we would be doing is the MR, magnetic resonance imaging, or in developed centers, we could have the scans in the form of technician scans, in the form of gallium scans or indium scans. Now, what is important about acute osteomyelitis is that we have got this emerging trend of MRSA, methicillin resistant staph aureus, which is a grave concern nowadays because of high morbidity and mortality associated with MRSA infections and you have to remember that MRSA strains can be there. Now in addition to that the patient would have clinical or lab features of increased ESR, increased C-reactive protein, leukocytosis and MRI picking up these lesions instantaneously. And once we have got two three weeks radiographs done, they would show important features like haziness in the bone, bone density decreased. We can have subperiosteal reactions. You can be visible uh, enough to see sequestrum, involucrum, the new bone growth, the dead necrotic bone growth, as I have mentioned earlier. So these features would be visible after second weeks of radiography. Now, in later stages, you can have soft tissue swellings, you can have complete lytic lesions. So this combination, you have to remember how 
the sequence of events pathologically goes and this acute osteomyelitis you have to remember that even it is common in IV drug users it is common in patients who have had prosthetic implants and again there the staph aureus is the most common organism involved in acute osteomyelitis in majority of the cases of patients with sickle cell anemia they develop this acute osteomyelitis salmonella would be an important causative organism the most common site where we have this acute osteomyelitis in case of adults would be the thoracolumbar spine i hope you find this information valuable and this is a very important topic and you remember all what i have said in this small period of time thanks a lot